in the previous video we talked about mutually exclusive events and collectively exhaustive events now we are going to discuss independent events independence the concept of independence the formula is quite simple but i just want to make sure that you understand the idea behind independence how it works the whole thing with some examples and some problems so let's start let's suppose you have a company called nico steels and the three ships they produce parts that's total parts produced and then we have defective parts produced from by each shift and here is the percentage defective that basically means 88 over 5500 this over that that over that and this over that so this is the overall defective parts in the company in the whole day or whole week they produce these many parts defective so we can put like this way defective given morning shift 1.6 given evening shift 2.4 night shift 2.7 but overall defect 2.10 now what you see they're not equal which means shift matters if your morning shift parts are not as defective as night shift parts are now let's think of another company called pioneer and here are the parts they produce and here is the defective morning 1.90 evening 1.91 night 1.95 overall 1.92 now what we really see is that the shifts don't really matter much here subject to one or two defective parts here and there they're pretty much the same which means it doesn't matter which shift you produce the part the defective rate is the same in this case shift matters basically an event a is not impacted by another event b that's independence that means a given b same thing as a or A given B, same thing as A. So B does not impact A. In our example, for Pioneer, defective given shift was the same thing as defective, which means shift in matter. That means these two are independent events, defective and shift. For Nico, they're not independent because shift determines how many parts defective. So that's the idea about independence. Here are some discussion examples. Probability of Down syndrome given mother's age, same thing as Down syndrome. Now, Down syndrome is a disease, genetic disorder among children. They're born with it. So, does mother's age impact the child, probability of Down, child having Down syndrome? Answer is yes. If the mother is older, probability is much higher than mother is younger. So, if an older mother, let's say 40 year old mother, a pregnant woman goes to doctor's office, they're going to discuss Down syndrome. But if it's a 25-year-old mother, they will not discuss it because chances are much, much lower. How about a team playing home field versus away game? Generally, home field is more winning chances than other side. So they may not be independent. Promotion given race. And we hear this all the time in real life. Given race, given gender, given ethnicity, given age, are they the same or the different? If they're same, you can simply say, well, you can belong to any race, we can belong to any gender, you can do anything, we don't care. If it's a different, then maybe government will come say, hey, why is it, why are you different? Okay. Tossing a coin is independent events. How about probability of A giving missing classes? Well, generally, they're not equal. If you miss too many classes, the chance of getting an A are lower than if you don't miss classes. So this gives you an idea how, about, how independence work in real life. Now some problems. Suppose probability of someone ordering wine in a restaurant is 40% and dessert is 30%. Assume the two are independent. What's the meaning of this? Well, basic that means is that people who order dessert are totally independent of what they order, wine or no wine, doesn't matter. It's 30% throughout the restaurant, all of it, okay? What is WND and what W intersection D? They basically mean what's probability if somebody order wine and dessert both? Wine and dessert both. Suppose there are 100 customers in the restaurant, 40 are expected to order wine, 40%, right? How many of these will order dessert? Well, remember it's independent. So these 40% people are there, there's a 30% chance they will order wine. That means 12. There we are. 12. Because what it has to be the ordering wine. There's no connection between this to this restaurant. 
Wine is completely different thing than dessert. No connection at all. And what we can say for independent events, probability of A and B, same thing as A times B. Then they're independent. In our example, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, usually 0 0.12. This times that. So when in the events are independent, when the events are independent, you simply multiply them. Similarly, probability of tossing two coins and getting two heads will be half times half, 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, independent. Another example, or more like problem. 40% wine, 30% dessert. Assuming independence, what's probably somebody will order either a wine or a dessert. Okay, wine or dessert. Or both, basically. So 40 here, 30 here, and this and that will be 12. That means 12 people will order wine and dessert both, like we discussed last, last example. Here's the example. Here is a picture here now. 40 order wine, 30 order dessert, 12 order both. So how many order wine or dessert or both? That will be 40 plus 30 minus 12 because we counted them twice. So this is called union of events or probability of this or that or union of events. And that will be this plus this minus this and that. Third, out of 100 customers who came to the restaurant, 35 ordered wine and 45 ordered dessert. 11 ordered both. Are the two events independent? Does ordering wine impact ordering dessert? So which means if you order wine, is the probability of ordering dessert becomes less, more or the same? Okay, that's what I'm looking at. Why can impact? Well, if I order wine, I spend like let's say $10 on my wine and I have less money for my dessert, so maybe less. Then I say, well, let's keep the dessert. I prefer wine, right? Given money, don't, given you don't have enough money. Here we have again, 35 wine, 45 dessert, 11 both. So if somebody ordered wine, what's probably they order also dessert, 11 over 35. We write like this. Dessert is 45%, but dessert given wine is only 31.4%. Dessert given wine, that's wine here. Okay, given dessert, that's dessert. So this over that will be 31.4%. So we are saying they're not independent, which means somebody ordered wine, chance of his or her ordering dessert becomes less, about 31%. Didn't order wine, it will be 45%. So they're not independent. And here's a formula, if you like formulas. D given W equal to this and that divided by that. But this and that will be 11. And this will be wine here. 11 over 35, 31.4. Now suppose somebody ordered dessert. What's probability he or she also ordered wine? Which means somebody ordered dessert. What's probability he or she also ordered wine? That will be 11 over 45. We write like this. Wine given dessert will be 11 over 45, 24.4%. So, not independent. Ordering wine impacts ordering dessert. And our last question is this, more like abstract question. Two events, D and W, they're mutually exclusive. Can they be independent? Well, the answer is no straight away if you think about it. Because it's a mutually exclusive, right? If W happens, D will not happen. D happens, W will not happen. Think of the wine. No one orders wine and dessert together. If you order wine, they will skip dessert. If you order dessert, they will skip wine. Which means, if somebody ordered wine, what's probably he or she will order dessert? Zero. So it's always zero. Answer is no, and this is always zero. If someone order wine, he or she will not order dessert because they are mutually exclusive. Which basically means this, algebraically. D given W equals D and W over W and this is zero because they are mutually exclusive, always zero. So, in conclusion, mutually exclusive events can never be independent because one happening impacts the other happening. And this is all there for, for this video. So I hope you understood the concept of independence now much better uh, and good luck.